Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interest in life.com and today you're joining me on board good old Tilly for a quick look at the anatomy of a narrowboat. We'll just have a general quick chat about some boating terms and different bits and pieces of a boat, where they are, what they look like and so on. I've done a similar video to this in the past but this time I'm going to hopefully improve things with some terrible pen and paper drawings that I'm going to throw into. I'm going to also try and tie this into the podcast series that I do and if you're interested in that I'll put links in the description and all that. Anyway, let's stop looking at my ugly mug and actually look at some boat stuff. Looking through the rear door we are looking out onto the stern which is the back of the boat starting with the basics here coming up to the tiller which is what you use to steer the boat this one is a simple square shape but as I'm sure you've seen on many other narrow boats it has a shape very similar to a swan's neck that is called a swan neck so that's self-explanatory then if this is the stern, so we just take a moment to look at my incredible water supply for if the engine coolant plays up. If we look down the, to the front of the boat, we're then looking at the bow. Two other nautical terms that you've probably heard, port and starboard. Port refers to the left side of the boat and starboard refers to the right hand side. The main indoor space of the boat is referred to as the cabin with the stern here being a very large stern which is called a cruiser stern and these are the sorts of sterns that you'll likely find on holiday boats nice big and open so that you can get plenty of people out on them there's also the traditional stern which are the ones where you see you have a very small area to stand on and steer from the back but also they will likely have a little bit of a uh, space that's not really indoor space truly but just slightly covered in there's also the semi-traditional stern or semi-trad which as you can imagine is neither cruiser nor traditional but a hybrid of the two. The big rope bumper at the back just like these uh, rubber ones at the side and also of course another rope one at the front are all known as fenders. The width of a boat is called its beam and to the widest part on a narrow boat that's normally about 6 foot 10. Once again, these are not the best drawings in the world. So this is the boat cut in half across ways. So we're looking straight down the boat as if we're stood on the stern or on the bow. And what you can first of all see is we have got the whole part here, which is the boaty part of the boat that sits in the water. The bottom of that is known as the base plate. On most narrow boats, it will be flat like that. But on Tilly, it is very slightly V-shaped. But that's not really relevant to the terms, it's still the base plate. What we've got here are these steps on either side, which run the full length of either side of the boat. Sometimes they'll be higher, sometimes lower, depending from boat to boat. Those are known as the gunnels, which is spelt gun whale. I believe that it comes from the term gun wall. I've in fact heard somebody refer to them as the gun walls. Gunnels, gun walls, gun whales. Gunnel is the most common one I've come across. You'll also notice that the cabin part, which basically creates the indoor space here, the top half of the boat has got these tilting insides, so it's narrower at the top than it is where it comes up from the gunnels. And that inward uh, turn or inward leaning is known as the tumble home. If we lift the deck boards up from the stern, then you can see first of all down into the engine, but you'll also notice that the boat has this V-shaped sort of cut in there and this part here is a lot higher up than where the engine is sat down and the rest of the boat is sat in the water. This shape is there so that it allows a lot more water to run cleanly over the propeller which is very handy because it means you can actually travel somewhere and that shape and this area is known as the swim this is all obviously very important for driving the boat and steering the propeller shaft, as you can see, goes out straight through there. The other side of that would be the propeller. Behind that would be the rudder that's obviously attached to the tiller for steering. And below that, at the absolute lowest point of the boat, is a little beam that just sticks off and basically holds the tiller and rudder in place. Right, I saved the most difficult technical part till last. We've got a side view here. As you've just seen what it looks like in real life, this is what it might look like from the side below the waterline with your propeller and your rudder. And this is also what it might look like from above or from below, just like you've seen in real life with the engine, the propeller shaft, 
the propeller and then the rudder. And really, I just wanted to do this one to show you properly. This is the swim, the cutaway part here that just allows the water to flow around to the propeller, which you can then direct that by moving the tiller. And obviously that steers the rudder to basically push the water in either direction and let you hopefully steer safely down the canal. So those are nice and simple. Rudder, as you would expect. Then the propeller, which we'll just put prop for laziness sake. Propeller shaft is obviously the shaft that comes from the engine down to the propeller. And that's obviously where it sticks and actually takes the engine's energy from inside the boat and sticks through into the water itself with the propeller. The only thing that's sort of more unusual and a less known term is this. This bar here, as I started to mention, but in the actual real life video I recorded, the audio went all weird. But that is the lowest part of the boat. It's basically just a metal bar that goes across to keep the rudder and the tiller from just dropping straight down into the bottom of the canal. And that is known as the skeg. Very, I don't know, I don't like that word at all. <laughs> so that's the lowest point in the water. From the waterline to the lowest point is known as the maximum draft. So if you hear of the draft of a boat on Tilly, it is about two and a half foot. And if you go into water that's lower than that, or shallower than that rather, you know, hang on, we're probably going to scrape along the bottom at some point. The, there's also the air draft, which as you might imagine, goes from the waterline to the highest point on the boat, which would probably be the chimney on Tilly. And that is just basically the air draft. So you have the draft or maximum draft, which is below the waterline, the maximum being the lowest point, which is the skeg, as mentioned, and the air draft, which is from the waterline right to the top. So you're not measuring from the bottom of the boat to the top, because that's the height of the boat overall. You're just measuring these terms from the waterline. Another term, this one far less used than the others, is the freeboard. And that basically refers to the distance between the waterline and here you can see we've got these drainage holes at the lowest point of the lowest deck for drainage on the boat. The freeboard being the space between the waterline and those holes there. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to subscribe and check out my other videos for almost 200 narrowboat videos. Plenty of canal stuff going on there as well. Feel free to like the Facebook page. And of course, feel free to even add me personally on Facebook and Twitter. Plenty of boat pictures and general updates from life on the canal. And of course, check out my books for the Kindle. The Narrowboat Lad, The Narrowboat Lad Living the Dream and The Narrowboat and the Notebook. Until the next time, have a fantastic day. Hope to see you around soon. Farewell.